What's going on guys, I'm in Advantage and welcome back to another NHL 22 video. In today's video, we're going over the new team of the season European players in NHL 22. Without any further ado, let's get right on into it. The European team of the season cards are finally here and it's great to see that we have some cards here that are quite incredible. We have a handful of 98s, 97s and 96s. If we're just looking at this at the surface before we dive into these cards, there's really not any here that are a surprise. I believe that we anticipated the majority of these players based on the seasons that they were having to get some of these cards. As you can see here, here is the subset of other players that received team of the season cards. And then lastly, for the best of the rest, looks like Jacob Markstrom got one, which is gonna be a pretty solid goaltender. We'll go over that in just a second. As far as acquiring these players, there's a few different options that you have. The only difference between this week and last is it now costs 26 collectibles versus 20, which actually does make a lot more sense being that there's a lot better players in this category to get. Uh, so I would certainly target one of these players instead of the young guns. So if you did save your collectibles, save some of your players, this is where I would go. Again, it's gonna cost you six more collectibles, but to me, the selection is worth it. There's a few other players that you can go out and get. You could potentially update your Kirill Kaprizov, your Leon Dreisaitl, your Rantanen, your Alexander Barkov. Victor Hedman also has an upgrade as well as Panarin and Ovi, Pasta, Yossi, and Rasmus Anderson. And again, for Anderson, it's gonna be his rival card. I'm going to go through all these, but if you do have one of these players, either their master set or their X factor, keep in mind that you'll be able to upgrade them through here. Secondly, as far as the collectibles go, everything is going to cost exactly the same as last week. There's no changes here. So roughly again, guys, 15,000 coins per collectible is where you want to be. Anywhere above that, I would steer clear. Anything below that is going to be a good buy. And then that being said, I also did make a video on this, but there are a couple different power up collectible sets that you can do. So if you have any team of the week or primetime cards, you can now, for example, get an 86 or higher, of course, overall player, whether it be team of the week or prime time and get three power collectibles in exchange for that. So something to keep in mind if you have some of those players in your collection, I'd probably steer clear of putting them in the team of the season set. Make sure you go ahead and look at that before you make those upgrades. So something to be cognizant of. I have the full details in another video that I just uploaded, but I wanted to bring that to your attention. Starting off, we have the 98 overall Victor Hedman, 6'6", 240 pounds. I'm not I'm not gonna go over every single ability, but this is definitely one of the cards I would look to choose in my choice pack or make straight from the sets if I were you. Now, I wouldn't change out the team of the year. At least that's my opinion. I like his team of the year card a bit better. He does have gold 1T, however. So if you do want gold 1T rather than the team of the year version where it has gold shutdown, again, just depending on the abilities that you'd like to activate on your players, something to consider. But oh, this card's obviously incredible. The best left-handed defenseman in the game right now, even better than Coborn in my opinion. It's 6'6", 240, best left-handed defenseman in the game bar none. Another phenomenal card that also has a team of the year out is Miko Rantanen. I'd say the key difference here is better superstar abilities than his team of the year card, but as far as synergies go, that's roughly going to be the same. He uh, does have fly the zone available as well as spark. So that is going to increase his acceleration to a 95 as well as his speed. Really doesn't matter. Um, I would say if you have your team of the year card, just really depends on the abilities that you're activating on there. Otherwise, doesn't really make much sense to change it out, but a phenomenal winger. I've had him on my team for pretty much all year. I just love the way that his card feels in game and definitely one of the best ones that you can make right now. To no surprise, Artemi Panera gets a card 99 overall in the acceleration category. You also could potentially change his speed to a 99, but you can't have both. So you have to pick one or the other. I do like the fact that he does have elite edges, much better options as far as zone and superstar abilities go compared to his X Factor card and obviously much cheaper to have this card in the future with how expensive those upgrades are. It's 200000 thousand coins I believe to go from 96 overall to 97 overall so even if he is going to get to a 99 you're going to spend roughly 450,000 coins to get there much better just to invest in this card and trade in his x factor if you have that ability to do so next up we have Leon Dreisaitl to no surprise at getting a team of the season card and very well deserved he also has a wingman or spark here which can help boost up his acceleration to a 94 and speed to a 92 so he's going to look 
and feel a little bit faster. Pretty much 99 everywhere across the board. I do like his abilities a bit better here. I would probably activate close quarters as well as potentially unstoppable force. Unfortunately, he still has gold tape to tape, which is the same as his X Factor card. So again, if you're upgrading these cards continuously, you plan to have him on your team for the rest of the year. Definitely swap out those X Factor cards and turn them into team of the season cards. It's going to save you a lot, even if you're just going from 96 to 99. I really believe this is going to be an extremely fun card to use. Kirill Kaprizov gets a card 5'10", 203. Although he's 5'10", he's a bit hard to take off the puck. With that weight, he does have elite edges and wheels as well, which is going to help him with that. And puck in the string is going to be a lot of fun to use with his card. So one of the more fun players in the game. I heard the stat the other night that he is the all-time leading points getter for the Minnesota Wild, I believe at 83 points. He just eclipsed that the other night during the Pittsburgh Penguins game. So I believe he's tied right now or in the lead solely, which is hard to believe that only 83 points is the max for Minnesota Wild players. But uh, anywho, it, it looks like he's going to have a great season for many seasons to come. And I'm happy to see that he got a card. This card's obviously incredible. All these cards are phenomenal. We're just going over some of the best ones that came out. Alex Ovechkin gets one in to me. Well, well, well deserved. I do like this a lot better as far as abilities go. I actually personally have his X-Factor card all the way maxed out. So I went ahead and turned this into his team of the season card as well. He does have gold close quarters, which is much better than gold 1T in my opinion. He does also have 1T if you don't want to rip some of those shots. I do love silver no contact and silver truculence as well as silver unstoppable force so he's going to be an unstoppable force out there he's extremely hard to take off the puck it's 6 3 2 36 i think it's well deserving that he got a card and i'm happy to see that ea did not snub him out of a team of the season card next up we have pasta six foot 194 pounds needs no introduction you could either potentially again just like panarin increase his speed or acceleration to a 99 depending on which one of those synergies you want to activate abilities are okay i really don't love them on him. I don't really understand the whole one T seeing eye. Tape to tape isn't that great, and neither is ankle breaker. Really, the only one I would even consider using is elite edges. Gold make it snappy isn't terrible. I wish it was six ability points rather than eight. Uh, but overall, phenomenal card. And if you're a pasta fan, it's a must have. This is one of the cards I'm debating on making for a few separate reasons. I've had Barkov's card on and off throughout the game earlier in the year when he was in the high 80s. He just felt amazing extremely hard to take off the puck. I'd have to imagine that his 95 overall. Obviously, Barkov's going to go up to a 99, no doubt, especially if Florida makes any kind of run in the playoffs, which they certainly should. So I would expect this card to go to a 99 in short order. At 6'3", 214, he's going to be really hard to take off the puck. I'm just not sure how high his speed is going to get. But even if he gets to around 96 speed, 96 acceleration, which you can change some of these out. You can also put on wingman or spark here. So it'd be 93 excel, 91 speed. So... That being the case, he's extremely hard to take off the puck. I just felt that his shot, his hands, and his ability to hold on to the puck for some reason is immaculate. So for me, this is one that I am thinking about targeting and making because I really believe he's going to be 99 overall sooner rather than later. This is one I'm keeping my eye on. Next up, we have Roman Yossi, one of the best left-handed defensemen in the game here as well. I do love to see that he did get 1T and seeing eye. So if you're looking for that left-handed shot that has a great combo of seeing eye and 1T, this is the card to look for. In addition to that, he does have stick him up. And if you really want to put gas in the fire, you can also throw on Heat Seeker. Again, if you have Headman already and or Coborn, where do you put him? That's the question. And that's kind of what I'm considering right now. But if you're a Preds fan like myself, Roman Yossi, well-deserved card for carrying Nashville for the most part this year. So love to see that you got the card. No surprise. And this is, again, one of the best left-handed defensemen in the game right now. I'd say it's the third best one out. And the same thing goes with him as well as Barkov and some of the other players that I mentioned earlier in the video, which is these guys are going to be in the playoffs. So they're probably going to get the 99 overall cards, especially as less teams are playing. They have more of a chance to get those upgrades. So for me, I think this is obviously a guaranteed 99 overall card. So if you're a Predators fan, this is a must make as well. Up next, we have Max Verano, I believe, or Verano. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. I actually kind of like this card. It's kind of sneaky good. He does have gold wheels. In addition to that, you could make his speed 95, so you could have 95 speed, 93 excel, or vice versa. He does have a few other decent synergies here, but for the most part, he's 99 across the board. I do like the fact that he has close
close quarters. I don't really love his other zone superstar abilities, but not a bad winger card. You could potentially also play him at center. He does have he does have Thief as an option, so that would bump up his faceoffs to an 87 overall. But if you need a right-handed shot, you know, he's not a bad one. One of the things I will mention, though, as I mentioned in the previous Team of the Season video, is I'm not sure how a card like this is going to get to 99 overall, so his cap might be 95 for either the rest of the game or at least till probably the last month or two of the game. So something to keep in mind if you're going after this card. Up next, Frederick Anderson gets a card. He does have a gold light work. So that is certainly something to consider for a goalie that's six foot four, 229 pounds. I would assume, obviously, being with Carolina, he's going to get a 99 overall card as well. So again, this is almost a guarantee 99. How much you invest in this one? I probably wouldn't go anywhere north than 350,000 coins. Who didn't see this one coming? Elias Lindholm, six foot, 194 pounds. He's having a solid season in Calgary and well-deserved card for him here. I wish he was a little bit bigger, six foot, 194. You know, he's kind of right in the middle of the road, but he does have some good abilities. He has total eclipse. If you'd like to take a lot of those shots from the point, he does have also unstoppable force and elite edge. So being able to hold on to the puck a little bit better there is certainly going to help. You know, this is a great card, especially if you're a Calgary Flames fan. All these cards are going to be phenomenal, and the same goes with him. I think Calgary has a great run or a great chance, rather, of making a run in the playoffs. So that being said, I would say that this is going to be a 99 card, no doubt, relatively soon. Shesterkin is our other attendee that gets the card, and although he's probably the best attendee in the league, with gold post to posts, yeah, it helps, but it's six foot one, 183. He's just going to be tough to use in HUD. So unless you're a Rangers fan, obviously this card is going to be phenomenal. Uh, if you're a Rangers fan, but uh, he may not be phenomenal for uh, for your hot team. So just something to keep in mind. But hey, if you're going to make him, you get 3x on each one of these synergies. So 3x for you know any of these that you're selecting, which is going to help your team regardless. I did this with Team of the Year Bazilevsky, who I still have <laughs> as my backup Tenny because he was just abysmal. But that being said, I think this is a great card, and I, I wouldn't target it if I wasn't a Rangers fan. Uh, but otherwise, I think he's going to be decent for you in that. Up next, we have Henrik Tamirnes, I believe. At 6'1", 185, he's a decent size for a defender. Only problem is being that he's not in the NHL. I don't know how many more upgrades he's going to get, but regardless, 95 Excel, 96 speed, 96 body checking. Yeah, I mean, this card is pretty solid where it counts defensively. I would say that he's probably not going to be a bad pickup if you can get him for around 225. Rasmus Anderson gets a card, six foot, 214 pounds. I wish he had truculence. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't, but you know, six foot, 214, I think he's big enough back there. And again, being on the flames, he's probably going to have a solid chance to continue to get Get some more upgrades and reach 99 overall so if you're a fan of him or the flames certainly a great pickup otherwise i'd probably steer clear of this one i just think he's a bit small and that there's going to be much better right-handed defensive options out there there already are so this wouldn't be one that i target i guess if you get it in your choice pack <laughs> i don't know if i'd pick this one uh, overall not a bad card i just don't think the immediate value is really there if you have a great team roman Cervanka also gets a card six foot 190 six pounds you might be able to get a guy like this for a steal at 94 speed 94 acceleration great shot hands are really solid actually where this card stands out is in his hands he also has puck on a string and close quarters you could potentially get away with playing him at center i know he is a center but he only has 83 face-offs that could potentially bump up if you do decide to put thief on him um, but then you have to sacrifice either workhorse wingman or spark so i don't know about center option for him probably wouldn't play him there but you might be able to pick him up for you know high hundreds 190 180k i think he'd be a good card there otherwise i would steer clear of this one anton levchi gets a card six foot 185 pound left winger he's a bit slow i quite frankly i would just pass on this card i don't think he's quick enough and for a team of the season card that's not in the nhl that's that slow it'd be hard to slot in your lineup right now this is a hard pass for me jacob markstrom gets a card now this is one of the more dangerous ones i wish he didn't have no timer curious to see i don't think that's really as effective at least from what i've seen in the cross creases but you never know it could be effective i don't think it's gonna be as effective as gold post to post he does have silver post to post and silver light work so that's what you're working with i just don't find that either one of these in its silver form is nearly as effective obviously in its gold form but it's almost unnoticeable at least from my experience but he is 6'6 205 pounds and it's probably going to be 99 overall being that he's 
Calgary's Tendi. So that being said, something to consider. Again, if you're a Flames fan, if you're a Markstrom fan, or even just looking to try another goalie out in net, I wouldn't go out of my way to get this card. But if you pull him untradeable, it's not the end of the world. Jonathan Pudis gets a card, 5'10", 176 pounds, and 91 speed, 91 excel. Too small, hard pass, would not invest in, would not pick in my choice pack. No offense to him. I hope he had a great season, but just for a hut card, yeah, yeah probably not. He has gold 1T. I guess that's a bright portion of this card and silver truculence and silver seeing eye. You know, great synergies, but he's just going to be too small, not quick enough, and not be able to take people off the puck as easily as we'd like him to. So I would probably pass on this card. Vili Sarajarvi, I believe I'm pronouncing that correct. I certainly could potentially be messing that up, but 5'10, 183 pounds. Again, I wish he was uh, a little bit bigger. He's a, he's a little bit bigger than, than the gentleman that we just went over there in Pudis, but 95 acceleration, 93 speed. So that is going to help a little bit. Again, you could potentially flip-flop those, have 95 speed and 93 Excel. I do find it actually better to have acceleration on for some of these players. I don't know why I clicked out of that there, but going back to his card, I probably would pass. I just, again, for me at least, having a smaller defenseman is going to be really worth it. I would rather go after the Quinn Hughes, who's going to be way quicker and probably around the same price. Marcel Nobels at 6'3", 204 pounds. That's a cool name, by the way. I actually really do like that. I think it'd be hard to take off the puck at 6'3", 204. Again, I just don't know how many upgrades he's going to get. I know I sound like a broken record with this, guys, but I just want to make the point clear. If you are getting an NHL player in the Icon Choice Pack versus getting one of these other players, that's something to consider, even if they are roughly the same on the surface. Unless you're getting a goaltender, you're probably better off picking an NHLer due to the fact that their upgrades are probably going to be way more likely and way more frequent than some of these other players. Again, it's not a hard set thing but again something to keep in mind whenever you're making that choice that's it for me on this one guys thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed today's video make sure you go ahead and click that like button and if you love nhl 22 content i would love to have you stick around here with me make sure you go ahead and click subscribe again i'm in advantage and i'll see you guys next time